if you've got an iPhone 13 Pro or 13 Pro Max, you know you've got macro photography enabled on this camera, on this phone. But how does that make these other lenses fit in the market, the macro lenses that screw into your phone? Let's find out. G'day guys, Shane Austin here. I usually do photos like this on this channel, but in this video we're getting up close and personal. You know I'm talking about this iPhone 13 Pros and the macro mode that's in there. It's really, really good, but it's not necessarily macro photography. It's kind of like going back to Camera Plus, and there's a few others around that have had macro photography enabled on iPhone for a while. But what they were was effectively just zooming in on a subject and using some computational photography, sharpen it up, and it actually looked pretty good. So now, while we've got macro mode on the iPhone, how does these other lenses fit in? Let's take some shots and we'll see. We're in the workshop today. I don't think I've done any videos in here. This is actually where I do a lot of the work to fix things on the farm and stuff. Um, we might even use this welding table here to do what we're going to do here today. The reason I'm in here is we've got lots of little tools, screws, all sorts of stuff that we, it's gonna lend itself pretty well to macro. Here I've got just a regular screw, it's hex head screw, it doesn't matter what sort of subject it is, but um, let's sit it there. What I'm gonna look at here is the depth of field that we've got going on here. So I'll turn the phone upside down, I'll turn the camera on. It's upside down so I get nice and close to the uh, screw. There you go, you can see macro mode on there right now. I'm gonna touch on the screw, hit the shutter and take a photo. And when I look through that photo now, it's, it's okay. It's, it's nothing flash, it's, it's good for a phone, but uh, if we zoom right in, you can see there's quite a few artifacts in that. Might try something else, something that you guys have asked me about a few times, some of you guys have asked me about. It's my old battalion ring. So what I'll do, I'm gonna take a photo using the same method as what we just did. Into the camera again, get over to here. There's macro mode, get nice and close, touch on the ring. Take a photo, let's have a look at this. What this shows me is that my eyes are absolutely screwed because I didn't even know it actually said the Royal Australian Regiment on there. That's what it says on the hat badge, that's the hat badge. That's kind of cool. What about a lens? The first one I'm going to use is this reflex lens. It's um, it's a uh, 75 millimeter equivalent of a macro zoom. And what we're going to do is actually use the Reflex Pro Camera app. Just open that up. And the reason that we're using a camera app like that is because we've got some cool tools here to use. So we can adjust everything here, but what I'm really interested in is the focusing. And the button that's up the top here, if I touch on that, it's going to show us the focus peaking. Now with this lens with the 75mm, the long range macro from Reflex, it's, it's very cool in that you can see how narrow that focal plane is. And again, a little bit closer, you can see most of that ring now is in focus. I'll take that photo. Let's compare the pair. At first glance, I'm going to say that the one with the lens is sharper, but the real thing that's the difference in these two photos is that the one from the camera app and the one from the manual app with the lens, the depth of field is just sensational. And you can really tell that we're using a lens there. The photo from the camera app, well, it's a lot more artifacts and stuff in that. And it's, well, it's not quite as sharp as it could be. Let's take some more photos. There is one thing I did notice and it's, the lighting is pretty bad here. Um, what I'm gonna use is this aperture torch. This is a torch, that, one of the sorts of torches that I use on a fairly regular basis for my videos at night. But I'm going to shine some light across the side. That looks pretty good. Take that photo. That with the light. And then of course, without the light, it gets the focus better with the light. The photo looks better with the light. We'll keep using the light.
As we look through these photos, I want you to keep in mind that macro photography, from my point of view, you really want to have a really, really good depth of field. It wants to be very, very narrow field of focus. And that line, that, that green line that you saw moving forwards and backwards, that's going to help you massive amounts when using these lenses. And I think the results really speak for themselves here. We get nice and sharp, quality photos, good depth of field, good isolation of the subject with an external lens. In the camera app on the iPhone, you do have some pretty quirky stuff that you can go forward and out in video and stuff, and it automatically switches between macro mode and regular mode. So it's kind of quirky in, in those sorts of things, and you can lock focus and bring it back. It's not, it's not really macro. It's a good way to put your toe in the water, if you like, but uh, it's not true macro. I think the best way to describe it is astrophotography with your phone. It's not exactly an outstanding result when you compare it to some of the professional DSLRs and mirrors that are available today, but it's a good way to start into a specific genre of photography. This is the same for macro. Use the camera app and play with macro. And you can see there's a whole great big world out there that's really small, and it takes some ripper photos, some really creative juices get flowing when you're using macro mode. But once you bring in a lens, it elevates that game just that bit more, and your photos are just that much better. Anyway guys, there's a link down in the description for where you can get these reflex lenses. There's even a code there that's going to give you a pretty bloody good discount. That's it for today guys. I'll see you later.